Freya. In Norse mythology, Freya, Old Norse for the lady, is a goddess associated with love, sex, beauty, fertility, gold, sather, war, and death. Freya is the owner of the necklace Brisingamen, rides a chariot pulled by two cats, is accompanied by the boar Hildisbini, and possesses a cloak of falcon feathers. By her husband Ithra, she is the mother of two daughters, Nas and Jersemi. Along with her brother Freyr, her father Njorthr, and her mother, Njorthr's sister, unnamed in sources, she is a member of the Vanir. Stemming from Old Norse Freya, modern forms of the name include Freya, Freya, and Freya. Freya rules over her heavenly field folk Vanger and there receives half of those that die in battle, whereas the other half go to the god Odin's hall, Valhalla. Within folk Vanger lies her hall, Sesrimer. Freya assists other deities by allowing them to use her feathered cloak, is invoked in matters of fertility and love, and is frequently sought after by powerful Jotnar who wish to make her their wife. Freya's husband, the god Ithra, is frequently absent. She cries tears of red gold for him, and searches for him under assumed names. Freya has numerous names, including Gefn, Horn, Mardal, Seer, Val Freya, and Vanitas. Freya is attested in the Poetic Edda compiled in the 13th century from earlier traditional sources, in the Prosetta and Heimskringla, composed by Snorri Sturluson in the 13th century, in several sagas of Icelanders, in the short story Sorlafadr, in the poetry of skalds, and into the modern age in Scandinavian folklore. Scholars have debated whether Freya and the goddess Frigg ultimately stem from a single goddess common among the Germanic peoples, connected her to the Valkyries, female battlefield choosers of the slain and analyzed her relation to other goddesses and figures in Germanic mythology, including the thrice-burnt and thrice-reborn Gulveig slash Hythra, the goddesses Gefion, Skadi, Thorger through Holgebrother, and Urpa, Mangloth, and the 1st century CE Isis of the Swaby. Freya's name appears in numerous place names in Scandinavia, with a high concentration in southern Sweden. Various plants in Scandinavia once bore her name but it was replaced with the name of the Virgin Mary during the process of Christianization. Rural Scandinavians continued to acknowledge Freya as a supernatural figure into the 19th century, and Freya has inspired various works of art. The name Freya transparently means, the, lady and ultimately derives from Proto-Germanic Frajeon. Freya is cognate with, for example, Old Saxon Fru Lady, Mistress and Old High German Frauwa, compare modern German Frau Lady. The theonym Freya is thus considered to have been an epithet in origin, replacing a personal name that is now unattested. As a result, either the original name became entirely taboo or another process occurred in which the goddess is a duplicate or hypostasis of another known goddess, see relation to Frigg and other goddesses and figures below. In addition to Freya, Old Norse sources refer to the goddess by way of the following names. In the poetic Edda, Freya is mentioned or appears in the poems Volespa, Grimnismal. Lokasena, Thrimskvitha, Adrunargraj, and Hindlaljoth. Voluspa contains a stanza that mentions Freya, referring to her as Oth's girl, Freya being the wife of her husband, Athra. The stanza recounts that Freya was once promised to an unnamed builder, later revealed to be a Jotun and subsequently killed by Thor, recounted in detail in Jilfa beginning chapter 42, see prose at a section below. In the poem Grimnismal, Odin, disguised as Grimner, Tells the young Ignar that every day Freya lots seats to half of those that are slain in her hall folk Vanger, while Odin owns the other half. In the poem Lokasena, where Loki accuses nearly every female in attendance of promiscuity or unfaithfulness, an aggressive exchange occurs between Loki and Freya. The introduction to the poem notes that among other gods and goddesses, Freya attends a celebration held by each her. In verse, after Loki has flighted with the goddess Frigg, Freya interjects telling Loki that he is insane for dredging up his terrible deeds, and that Frigg knows the fate of everyone, though she does not tell it. Loki tells her to be silent, and says that he knows all about her, that Freya is not lacking in blame, for each of the gods and elves in the hall have been her lover. Freya objects. She says that Loki is lying, that he is just looking to blather about misdeeds, and since the gods and goddesses are furious at him, he can expect to go home defeated. Loki tells Freya to be silent calls her a malicious witch, and conjures a scenario where Freya was once astride her brother when all of the gods, laughing, surprised the two. Jorthr interjects, he says that a woman having a lover other than her husband is harmless, and he points out that Loki has born children, and calls Loki a pervert. The poem continues in turn.
The poem Thrymskvitha features Loki borrowing Freya's cloak of feathers and Thor dressing up as Freya to fool the lusty Jotun Thrymur. In the poem, Thor wakes up to find that his powerful hammer, Mjolnir, is missing. Thor tells Loki of his missing hammer, and the two go to the beautiful court of Freya. Thor asks Freya if she will lend him her cloak of feathers, so that he may try to find his hammer. Freya agrees. Loki flies away in the whirring feather cloak, arriving in the land of Jotunheimr. He spies Thrymr sitting on top of a mound. Thrymr reveals that he has hidden Thor's hammer deep within the earth and that no one will ever know where the hammer is unless Freya is brought to him as his wife. Loki flies back, the cloak whistling, and returns to the courts of the gods. Loki tells Thor of Thrymr's condition. The two go to see the beautiful Freya. The first thing that Thor says to Freya is that she should dress herself and put on a bride's headdress, for they shall drive to Jotunheimr. At that, Freya is furious, the halls of the god shake, she snorts in anger, and from the goddess the necklace prize and gamut falls. Indignant, Freya responds. The gods and goddesses assemble at a thing and debate how to solve the problem. The god Heimdall proposes to dress Thor up as a bride, complete with bridal dress, headdress, jingling keys, jewelry, and the famous Brisingman. Thor objects but is hushed by Loki, reminding him that the new owners of the hammer will soon be settling in the land of the gods if the hammer isn't returned. Thor is dressed as planned and Loki is dressed as his maid. Thor and Loki go to Jotunheim. In the meantime, Thrym tells his servants to prepare for the arrival of the daughter of Njorthr. When Freya arrives in the morning, Thrym is taken aback by her behavior. Her immense appetite for food and meat is far more than what he expected, and when Thrym goes in for a kiss beneath Freya's bale, he finds her eyes to be terrifying, and he jumps down the hall. The disguised Loki makes excuses for the bride's odd behavior, claiming that she simply has not eaten or slept for eight days. In the end, the disguises successfully fool the Yatnar and, upon sight of it, Thor regains his hammer by force. In the poem Adrun Argrach, Adrun helps Borgni give birth to twins. In thanks, Borgni invokes Vetter, Frigg, Freya, and other unspecified deities. Freya is a main character in the poem Hindlul Joth, where she assists her faithful servant Otar in finding information about his ancestry so that he may claim his inheritance. In doing so, Freya turns Otar into her boar, Hildisbini, and, by means of flattery and threats of death by fire, Freya successfully prized the information had Otar needs from the Jotun Hindla. Freya speaks throughout the poem and at one point praises Otar for constructing a horger, an altar of stones, and frequently making plot, sacrifices, to her. Freya appears in the prose at a book's Jilfaginning and Skaldskaparmal. In chapter 24 of Jilfaginning, the enthroned figure of High says that after Thgod and Jorthur split with the goddess Skavi, he had two beautiful and mighty children, no partner is mentioned, a son, Freyr, and a daughter, Freya. Freyr is the most glorious of the gods and Freya the most glorious of the goddesses. Freya has a dwelling in the heavens, Folkvanger, and that whenever Freya rides into battle she gets half the slain, and the other half to Odin, in support, High quotes the grim Nismal stanza mentioned in the poetic Edda section above. High adds that Freya has a large, beautiful hall called Sesramur, and that when Freya travels she sits in a chariot and drives two cats, and that Freya is the most approachable one for people to pray to and from her name is derived the honorific title whereby noble ladies are called Fruver, noble ladies. High adds that Freya has a particular fondness for love songs, and that it is good to pray to her concerning love affairs. In Chapter 29, High recounts the names and features of various goddesses, including Freya. Regarding Freya, High says that, next to Frigg, Freya is highest in rank among them and that she owns the necklace Brisingman. Freya is married to Ithra who goes on long travels, and the two have a very fair daughter by the name of Nas. While Ithra is absent, Freya stays behind and in her sorrow she weeps tears of Regold. High notes that Freya has many names, and explains that this is because Freya adopted them when looking for a throne traveling among strange peoples. These names include Gefn, Horn, Mardal, Seer, and Vanadis. Freya plays a part in the events leading to the birth of Sleipnir, the eight-legged horse. In Chapter 42, High recounts that, soon after the gods built the hall Valhalla, a builder, unnamed, came to them and offered to build for them in three seasons a fortification so solid that no Jotun would be able to come and over from Midgard. In exchange, the builder wants Freya for his bride, and the sun and the moon. After some debate the gods agree, but with added conditions. In time, just as he is about to complete his work, 
it is revealed that the builder is, in fact, himself a Jotun, and he is killed by Thor. In the meantime, Loki, in the form of a mare, has been impregnated by the Jotun's horse, Svadiofari, and so gives birth to Sleipnir. In support, High quotes the Volaspa stanza that mentions Freya. In chapter 49, Hai recalls the funeral of Baldur and says that Freya attended the funeral and there drove her cat chariot, the final reference to the goddess in Jilf beginning. At the beginning of the book Skaldskaparmal, Freya is mentioned among eight goddesses attending a banquet held for each redot. Chapter 56 details the abduction of the goddess Idun by the Jotun Thiazi in the form of an eagle. Terrified at the prospect of death and torture due to his involvement in the abduction of Idun, Loki asks if he may use Freya's falcon shape to fly north to Jotunheimer and retrieve the missing goddess. Freya allows it, and using her falcon shape and a furious chase by Eagle Thiazi, Loki successfully returns her. In Chapter 6, a means of referring to Njorthur is provided that refers to Freya, father of Freyr and Freya. In Chapter 7, a means of referring to Freyr is provided that refers to the goddess, brother of Freya. In Chapter 8, ways of referring to the god Heimdall are provided including Loki's enemy, recoverer of Freya's necklace, inferring a myth involving Heimdall recovering Freya's necklace from Loki. In Chapter 17, the Jotun Rungner finds himself in Asgard, the realm of the gods, and becomes very drunk. Rungner boasts that he will move Valhalla to Jotunheimer, bury Asgard, and kill all of the gods, with the exception of the goddesses Freya and Sif, who he says he will take home with him. Freya is the only one of them that dares to bring him more to drink. Rungner says that he will drink all of their ale. After a while, the gods grow bored of Rungner's antics and invoke the name of Thor. Thor immediately enters the hall, hammer raised. Thor is furious and demands to know who is responsible for letting Iotan into Asgard, who guaranteed Rungner's safety, and why Freya should be serving him drink as if at the Esser's banquet. In Chapter 18, verses from the 10th century skald's composition Thor Strapa are quoted. A kenning used in the poem refers to Freya. In chapter 20, poetic ways to refer to Freya are provided daughter of Njorthr, sister of Freyr, wife of Ithr, mother of Nas, possessor of the fallen slain and of Sesramur and Tomcats, possessor of Brisingamen, Van Deity, Vanadis, and Vertir Deity. In chapter 32, poetic ways to refer to gold are provided, including Freya's weeping in rain or shower, from Freya's eyes. Chapter 33 tells that once the gods journeyed to visit Ytra, one of whom was Freya. In Chapter 49, a quote from a work by the skald Einar Skalsen employs the kenning Ithra's bedfellows Irene, which refers to Freya and means gold. Chapter 36 explains again that gold can be referring to as Freya's weeping due to her red gold tears. In support, works by the skalds Shkuli Thorsteinsen and Einar Skalsen are cited that use Freya's tears or Freya's weepings to represent gold. The chapter features additional quotes from poetry by A. Narskos and that references the goddess and her child Nas. Freya receives a final mention in the Prosetta in Chapter 75, where a list of goddesses is provided that includes Freya. The Heimskringla book Inglinga Saga provides a numerized account of the origin of the gods, including Freya. In Chapter 4, Freya is introduced as a member of the Vanir, the sister of Freyr, and the daughter of Njorthur and his sister, whose name is not provided. After the Esser von der war ends in a stalemate, Odin appoints Freyr and Jorthra as priests over sacrifices. Freya becomes the priestess of sacrificial offerings and it was she who introduced the practice of Sather to the Esser, previously only practiced by the von der In Chapter 10, Freya's brother Freyr dies, and Freya is the last survivor among the Esser and von der. Freya keeps up the sacrifices and becomes famous. The saga explains that, due to Freya's fame, all women of rank become known by her name, Fruver. Ladies, a woman who is the mistress of her property is referred to as Freya, and Hus Freya, lady of the house, for a woman who owns an estate. The chapter adds that not only was Freya very clever, but that she and her husband Ithra had two immensely beautiful daughters, Jersemi and Nas, who gave their names to our most precious possessions. Freya is mentioned in the sagas Aeol's Saga, Anjal's Saga, Half Saga OK Half Sreka, and in Sorla Thatter. In Aeol's Saga, when Aetil Skallagrimson refuses to eat, his daughter Thorgerth, here anglicized as Thorgerd, says she will go without food and thus starve to death, and in doing so will meet the goddess Freya. In the first chapter of the 14th century legendary saga Half Saga OK Half Sreka, King Ulrich has two wives, Geraild and Signy, 
and cannot keep them both. He tells the two women that he would keep whichever of them that brews the better ale for him by the time he has returned home in the summer. The two compete and during the brewing process Signy prays to Freya and Garyle to Hot, Hood, a man she had met earlier, earlier in the saga revealed Tobioden in disguise. Hot answers her prayer and spits on her yeast. Signy's brew wins the contest. In Sorla Thatcher, a short, late 14th century narrative from a later and extended version of the Olaf's saga Trigvason are found in the Flatty Jarbach manuscript, a numerized account of the gods is provided. In the account, Freya is described as having been a concubine of Odin, who bartered sex to four dwarfs for a golden necklace. In the work, the Esir once lived in a city called Asgard, located in a region called Asia Land or Asia Home. Odin was the king of the realm, and made Njorthur and Freya temple priests. Freya was the daughter of Njorthur, and was Odin's concubine. Odin deeply loved Freya, and she was the fairest of women of that day. Freya had a beautiful bower, and when the door was shut no one could enter without Freya's permission. Chapter 1 records that one day Freya passed by an open stone where dwarfs lived. Four dwarfs were smithying a golden necklace, and it was nearly done. Looking at the necklace, the dwarfs thought Freya to be most fair, and she the necklace. Freya offered to buy the collar from them with silver and gold and other items of value. The dwarfs said that they had no lack of money, and that for the necklace the only thing she could offer them would be a knight with each of them. Whether she liked it better or worse, Freya agreed to the conditions, and so spent a night with each of the four dwarfs. The conditions were fulfilled and the necklace was hers. Freya went home to her bower as if nothing happened. As related in Chapter 2, Loki, under the service of Odin, found out about Freya's actions and told Odin. Odin told Loki to get the necklace and bring it to him. Loki said that since no one could enter Freya's bower against her will, this wouldn't be an easy task, yet Odin told him not to come back until he had found a way to get the necklace. Howling, Loki turned away and went to Freya's bower but found it locked, and that he couldn't enter. So Loki transformed himself into a fly, and after having trouble finding even the tiniest of entrances, he managed to find a tiny hole at the gable top, yet even here he had to squeeze through to enter. Having made his way into Freya's chambers, Loki looked around to be sure that no one was awake, and found that Freya was asleep. He landed on her bed and noticed that she was wearing the necklace, the clasp turned downward. Loki turned into a flea and jumped onto Freya's cheek and here bit her. Freya stirred, turning about, and then fell asleep again. Loki removed his flea's shape and undid her collar, opened the bower, and returned to Odin. The next morning Freya woke and saw that the doors to her bower were open, yet unbroken and that her precious necklace was gone. Freya had an idea of who was responsible. She got dressed and went to Odin. She told Odin of the malice he had allowed against her and of the theft of her necklace, and that he should give her back her jewelry. Odin said that, given how she obtained it, she would never get it back. That is, with one exception, she could have it back if she could make two kings, themselves ruling twenty kings each, battle one another, and cast a spell so that each time one of their numbers falls in battle they will again spring up and fight again. And that this must go on eternally, unless a Christian man of a particular stature goes into the battle and smites them, only then will they stay dead. Freya agreed. Although the Christianization of Scandinavia sought to demonize the native gods, belief and reverence in the gods, including Freya, remained into the modern period and melded into Scandinavian folklore. Comments that Freya became a particular target under Christianization. However, Freya did not disappear. In Iceland, Freya was called upon for assistance by way of Icelandic magical staves as late as the 18th century, and as late as the 19th century, Freya is recorded as retaining elements of her role as a fertility goddess among rural Swedes. The Old Norse poem Thrymskvatha, or its source, continued into Scandinavian folk song tradition, where it was humorized and otherwise transformed over time. In Iceland, the poem became known as Thriller. Whereas in Denmark the poem became Thor af Havskert and in Sweden it became Torvison or Hammerhampningen. A section of the Swedish Torvison, in which Freya has been transformed into the fair, Denvana, Fragenborg, reads as follows. In the province of Småland, Sweden, an account is recorded connecting Freya with sheet lightning in this respect. Writer Johann Alfred Goth recalled a Sunday in 1880 where men were walking in fields and looking at nearly ripened rye, where Monson carried said, now Freya is out watching if the rye is ripe. Along with this, Goth recalls another mention of Freya in the countryside. In Varand, Sweden, 
Freya could also arrive at Christmas night and she used to shake the apple trees for the sake of a good harvest and consequently people elect some apples in the trees for her sake. However, it was dangerous to leave the plow outdoors, because if Freya sat on it, it would no longer be of any use. S several plants were named after Freya, such as Freya's tears and Freya's hair, Polygola vulgaris, but during the process of Christianization, the name of the goddess was replaced with that of the Virgin Mary. In the pre-Christian period, the Orion constellation was called either Frick's Distaff or Freya's Distaff, Swedish Freya. Place names in Norway and Sweden reflect devotion to the goddess, including the Norwegian place name Freyhof, originally Freyhof, literally Freya's Hof, and Swedish place names such as Fravi, from Freyuv, literally Freya's Ve. In a survey of toponyms in Norway, M. Olsen tallies at least 20 to 30 location names compounded with Freya. Three of these place names appear to derive from Freyhof, Freya's Hof, whereas the goddess's name is frequently otherwise compounded with words for meadow, such as Thvate, land, and similar land formations. These toponyms are attested most commonly on the west coast, though a high frequency is found in the southeast. Place names containing Freya are yet more numerous and varied in Sweden, where they are widely distributed. A particular concentration is recorded in Upland, among which a number derived from the above-mentioned Frey Uth and also Frey Ulander, Freya's sacred grove, place names that indicate a public worship of Freya. In addition, a variety of place names, such as Frol and Freyl, have been seen as containing an element cognate to Gothic Hells and Old English Eel, Temple, although these place names may be otherwise interpreted. In addition, Freya appears as a compound element with a variety of words for geographic features such as fields, meadows, lakes, and natural objects such as rocks. The Freya name Horn appears in the Swedish place names Harnavi and Jarnavi, stemming from the reconstructed Old Norse place name Hornerve, meaning Hornsve. A priestess was buried with considerable splendor in Hageby Hoga in Nurstajutland. In addition to being buried with her wand, she had received great riches which included horses, a wagon and an Arabian bronze pitcher. There was also a silver pendant, which represents a woman with a broad necklace around her neck. This kind of necklace was only worn by the most prominent women during the Iron Age and some have interpreted it as Freya's necklace bracing him and the pendant may represent Freya herself. A 7th century phalara found in a warrior grave in what is now Eschwege in northwestern Germany features a female figure with two large braids flanked by two cat like beings and holding a staff like object. This figure has been interpreted as Freya. This image may be connected to various B type bracteates, referred to as the Furstenberg type, that may also depict the goddess. They show a female figure, in a short skirt and double looped hair, holding a staff or scepter in her right hand and a double cross feature in the left. A 12th century depiction of a cloaked but otherwise nude woman riding a large cat appears on a wall in the Schleswig Cathedral in Schleswig Holstein, northern Germany. Beside her is similarly a cloaked yet otherwise nude woman riding a distaff. Due to iconographic similarities to the literary record, these figures have been theorized as depictions of Freya and Frigg respectively. Due to numerous similarities, scholars have frequently connected Freya with the goddess Frigg. The connection with Frigg in question of possible earlier identification of Freya with Frigg in the Proto-Germanic period, Frigg and Freya origin hypothesis, remains a matter of scholarly discourse. Regarding a Freya Frigg common origin hypothesis, scholar Stefan Grundy comments that the problem of whether Frigg or Freya may have been a single goddess originally is a difficult one, made more so by the scantiness of pre-Viking Age references to Germanic goddesses and the diverse quality of the sources thought the best that can be done is to survey the arguments for and against their identity, and to see how well each can be supported. Like the name of the group of gods to which Freya belongs, the Vanir, the name Freya is not attested outside of Scandinavia, as opposed to the name of goddess Frigg, who is attested as a goddess common among the Germanic peoples, and whose name is reconstructed as Proto-Germanic Frigho. Similar proof for the existence of a common Germanic goddess from which Freya descends does not exist. But scholars have commented that this may simply be due to lack of evidence. In the poetic Edda poem Völuspá, a figure by the name of Gulvæg is burned three times yet is three times reborn. After her third rebirth, she is known as Hythr. This event is generally accepted as precipitating the Esser Vanir War. Starting with scholar Gabriel Turville Petre, scholars such as Rudolf Simic, Andy Orchard, and John Lindo have theorized that Gulvæg slash Hythr is the same figure as Freya and that her involvement with the Esser somehow led to the events of the esser Vanir War. Outside of theories connecting Freya with the goddess Frigg, some scholars, 
such as Hilda Ellis Davidson and, have theorized that other goddesses in Norse mythology, such as Gefion, Jerthra, and Skadi, may be forms of Freya in different roles or ages. Freya and her afterlife field folk Bonger, where she receives half of the slain, have been theorized as connected to the Valkyries. Scholar Brit Mari Nestrom points out the description in Jill Faginning where it is said of Freya that whenever she rides into battle she takes half of the slain, and interprets folk Bonger as the field of the warriors. Nestrom notes that, just like Odin, Freya receives slain heroes who have died on the battlefield, and that her house is Sesramur, which she translates as filled with many seats, a dwelling that Nestrom posits likely fills the same function as Valhalla. Nestrom comments that still, we must ask why there are two heroic paradises in the Old Norse view of afterlife. It might possibly be a consequence of different forms of initiation of warriors, where one part seemed to have belonged to Uthin and the other to Freya. These examples indicate that Freya was a war goddess, and she even appears as a Valkyrie, literally the one who chooses the slain. Siegfried Andres Dabat comments that in her mythological role as the chooser of half the fallen warriors for her death realm folk Vanger, the goddess Freya, however, emerges as the mythological role model for the Valkyrjar and the Deezer. Gustav Neckel, writing in 1920, connects Freya to the Phrygian goddess Sibel. According to Neckel, both goddesses can be interpreted as fertility goddesses and other potential resemblances have been noted. Some scholars have suggested that the image of Sibel subsequently influenced the iconography of Freya, the lions drawing the former's chariot becoming large cats. These observations became an extremely common observation in works regarding Old Norse religion until at least the early 1990s. In her book-length study of scholarship on the topic of Freya, Britt Mari Nestrom, 1995, is highly critical of this deduction, Nastrom sees that these parallels are due to sheer ignorance about the characteristics of Sibel. Scholars have not troubled to look into the resemblances and differences between the two goddesses, if any, in support for their arguments for a common origin. Into the modern period, Freya was treated as a Scandinavian counterpart to the Roman Venus in, for example, Swedish literature, where the goddess may be associated with romantic love or, conversely, simply as a synonym for lust and potency. In the 18th century, Swedish poet Carl Michael Bellman referred to Stockholm prostitutes in his Fredman's epistles as the children of Froha. In the 19th century, Britt Mari Nestrom observes, Swedish romanticism focused less on Freya's erotic qualities and more on the image of the pining goddess, weeping for her husband. Freya is mentioned in the first stanza, it is called Old Denmark and it is Freya's Hall, of the civil national anthem of Denmark. Dare at Windig Land, written by 19th century Danish poet Adam Gottlob Holmschlager in 1819. In addition, Holmschlager wrote a comedy entitled Freya's Altar, 1818, on de poem Free Eyes Sal featuring the goddess. The 19th century German composer Richard Wagner's Der Ring des Nibelungen opera cycle features Freya, the goddess Freya combined with the apple bearing goddess Idun. In late 19th century and early 20th century Northern Europe, Freya was the subject of numerous works of art, including Freya by H. E. Freund, Statue, 1821-1822, Freya's Ocon Sin Make, Painting, 1852, by Nils Blommer, Freya's Aufnahme on Erd den Gottern, Charcoal Drawing, 1881, and Freig, Freya, Drawing, 1883, by, Freya, 1901, by Carl Emil Deppler D. J. And Freya and the Briesingemen by J. Doyle Penrose, Painting, 1862 1932. Like other Norse goddesses, her name was applied widely in Scandinavia to, for example, sweetmeats or to stout card horses. Vanitas, one of Freya's names, is the source of the name of the chemical element vanadium, so named because of its many colored compounds. Starting in the early 1990s, derivatives of Freya began to appear as a given name for girls. According to the Norwegian name database from the Central Statistics Bureau, around 500 women are listed with the first name Freya, the modern Norwegian spelling of the goddess's name, in the country. There are also several similar names, such as the first element of the diplomatic personal name Freudes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.